This can be confirmed by looking at the Allison transmission shift selector and noting that the current gear and the selected gear are in neutral, N. Finally, engine control mode should be from the accelerator pedal, not PTO, remote PTO, cruise control, etc. In other words, it can't be in pump. The cruise control, uh, I don't know if you know this, but pump governor is connected to the cruise control circuits of the engine, so, but it has to be not in pump. When a stationary regeneration event is initiated, the DTF lamp will go off and the HEST lamp will be illuminated. As the engine adds hydrocarbons to the exhaust stream, the exhaust system temperature goes up. Engine speeds will be increased, and the sound coming from the turbocharger will change during the stationary active regeneration process. ISLIS engines will increase speed to 1050 RPM. The ISX 11.9 will increase speed to 960 RPM. The ISX 15 will increase speed to 900 RPM. The procedure will take 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the amount of soot accumulated in the filter. Breaking any of the required conditions will stop the regeneration process and engine operation will return to normal. If excessive soot buildup remains in the DPF, the DPF light will return to the appropriate indication stage until an adequate regeneration occurs. When regeneration has been completed, the HEST lamp will remain illuminated until the exhaust outlet temperature is below 525 degrees Celsius or 977 degrees Fahrenheit, or the vehicle speed exceeds 5 miles per hour. The following vehicle conditions must be satisfied before the engine will initiate an automatic active regeneration. One. Accumulation of soot in the filter, to the point where the engine control system looks for opportunities to actively regenerate the DPF. Now this is talking about automatic regen the truck does on its own, okay? Right. Two, sufficient exhaust flow and temperature conditions, typical pumping or driving conditions should be adequate. Three, speedometer showing five miles per hour or higher vehicle speed. When the engine determines that it is appropriate to initiate an active regeneration, it adds hydrocarbons to the exhaust stream. The HEST lamp will illuminate during a DPF regeneration while dosing. It is also triggered at temperatures above 1000 degrees Fahrenheit and will not shut off until the exhaust temperature drops below 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Breaking any of the required conditions will stop the regeneration process. If excessive soot buildup remains in the DPF, the DPF light will return to the appropriate indication stage until an adequate regeneration occurs. No engine speed or load changes will occur during regeneration in pumping or driving modes. So, several important things there. Um, first of all, people ask me, what if I get a call while I'm doing a regen? I'm regen the truck out front here and we get a call. No problem. You get in the truck, when you step on the brake to put it in drive, it's going to drop out of regen. Or you release the parking brake, or you step on the brake. It's going to drop out of regen, and you just drive off. Now, you still have to regen it later and make that light go away, but you can, you can run the car. Okay. My caveat to that, if, it, if it's already it's plugged up enough that that light is flashing, then you need to say, hey, sorry, we need to, we need to complete our regen. If you don't complete your Regen and it's, that light is flashing, you'll end up getting, you'll end up getting a record. That's what's going to happen. More. More. Come on. 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 Come on that at some point in time you'll regen this truck and you'll get all done. You go to put it away and the regen light comes right back on. You might have to just regen it twice. Do um, you guys force regens in your shop? Uh, we do, yeah. yeah. Do you? Yeah. So while they can force regen it, and, and, and maybe they even do that on a PM basis? We do, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can. So you can only do it if that light comes on and the, the engine software limits you on how long you can regen it. He doesn't have those limits. If you're having trouble with one regen, he can regen the heck out of it. Um, I just had to have my F-250 done. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I had to take it in and have him do a force regen. 
has about 90,000 miles. So, um, but we're just going over region. Let's talk about region. Okay. So, if you're in the middle of an active that you forced, uh, and you go and drive, it'll, with the qualifiers met while driving, it should maintain that process of cleaning it if you're above five miles an hour? Yeah, but um, most effective when you're above 45. Okay. Most effective really uh, on the highway is where it'll do it quickly. In fact, some, uh, I recently delivered, uh, there was a commercial chassis, I think it might have been a Kenworth, but that actually their first instruction when you saw the regen light was to take it and drive it. Not to do a park. The park regen is kind of last resort on some commercials. Now, if you drop below 45, does it? It won't stop anything. It's just more efficient above 45. Yeah, it's just not very effective. Because so we go <laughs> stoplight to stoplight, and we can hit 55, 60, and then we have to stop at the stoplight and then go to the next one. <laughs> not. It's not going to do much regen. All right. So we just, just, drop, yeah, we just go. Around. That one rarely gets up to yeah, high speeds. More. Where this truck to be located is primarily residential. So. Right. You're not going to get above above 35 miles an hour ever. Yeah. yeah. So the important regents for you are going to be the ones you guys do at the station. Yeah. What? So you yeah. force it regardless? When uh, usually there? during PM, the first thing we do while we're checking lights, it already takes half an hour anyway, so we'll just force regents and go through the scrubs and let us check lights. Cool. Okay. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, I, uh, I retired from Lakeland Fire Department, and uh, they, they have a like, fire department fleet shop. Yeah. And they, they actually uh, have a, a regen day for the tower, right. for the real heavy truck. And those guys have to take it out on I-4 at a time of day where you can roll. Yeah. Not I all force. the time, yeah. for sure. But <laughs> yeah. anyway, you got, you got to take it out there. you got to drive it 20 and 20, 20 out and 20 back. So well, I think they do that once a month. And that's really cut down on their problems a lot yeah. with that truck. But it's got big horsepower, heavy 85,000 pound truck. You know. So people ask me uh, lots of questions about these things. How long will it take? Typically what I see, and you guys chime in here, is 40, 45 minutes. Anywhere I bet it take 30, yeah. so on average I say 30, 30 to 60 minutes. Yeah. Uh, another one people ask me is how often, and all that's about usage. So if we uh, if we had uh, like a East Pasco County station, guys run 20 calls a month, might not have to reach in that truck once a year, might, not even once every two years. And they got three shifts, God, I never see a reach in. Guys run 20 calls a day, run them all in an eight block radius of downtown Tampa, probably have to reach in that damn thing every two weeks. So it's all about usage uh, and weight of the truck. You're going to have to reach in. The more fuel it uses, the more you got to reach in. So a couple of things about diesel exhaust fluids. I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. And it's going to use a bunch of slides that I skipped to tell you not to let it run out because bad things happen. You let it run out of juice, it's good, bad things will happen. It'll derate, stop, and, you know, check engine, stop engine, you, you'll be over to make the shop again. Um, but one caution about that is um, uh, actually Tampa Fire Mechanic, I was there, um, trained in their fire department, they always have a fleet guy sit in too. And he said, if, if you have any customers that to buy the two and a half gallon, you know, buy the stuff at AutoZone or whatever. That stuff's fine, but don't ever leave a partial container. Yeah. Ever. If you have something left over, nobody's looking, throw it away. Don't leave an open container because it's going to start crystallizing like on the get go. Yes. Yes. I thought it was a fire alarm the first time that happened. Yes. Well, I guess I'm going to get a little bit Okay, so, but you always use fresh death fluid. 
I don't know if you guys have it at Fleet. Yeah, we do. Yeah, they have it at the stations too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. We typically fill it once the light comes on, which is right around a quarter tank. We just make sure it's a little bit under a quarter, and then it'll take the whole box. There you go. There you go. If you do it right at a quarter, like right when it comes on, you're most likely going to spill it. It's going to overflow. Overflow. So we make sure it's a good line or two below the quarter and the light stays on all the time. Because sometimes it will just trigger on, then you drive, it's sloshing, it'll go off. So right. we try to make sure it's on a good line or two below and then we put it in there. Yeah, those things are the most accurate things in the world, anyways. You just experience and they show you how you put a whole box in. Yeah. That's what I always recommend. Let it go down to half or whatever it takes to get the whole, whole container. Okay, good deal. We're on, on the same page here. Activating the regeneration process requires the operator to press the regeneration. Okay, we'll, we'll point out the regen switches when we get outside. If the soot load in the DTN builds up and the necessary conditions for regeneration cannot be achieved, the engine lamps will indicate a more serious condition. If this occurs, operators should be mindful of the potential for gradual power derates due to higher soot loading. If the DPF lamp begins to flash, along with a solid check engine light, the operator may need to take action. This action could be removing the truck from a mission that requires very high load operation, changing the duty cycle to allow a regeneration to occur, or initiate... Yeah, you're already in, you're already in, the, in the weeds here. This, this is going to end up with him. Uh, so try to catch it before it gets there. As the soot in the filter is removed in the regeneration process, a small amount of ash is left behind in the filter. Over time, this ash will build up to the point where it must be removed. The engine control system can differentiate between soot buildup and ash buildup. The ash is removed by disassembling the DPF and cleaning the filter in a special machine. The target for regular maintenance is a 200,000 to 400,000 mile interval, which is dependent on the duty cycle, the type of oil used, and the oil consumption rate. Okay, so that's, those are again over the road or, or uh, uh, metro delivery. That's, all that's from Cummins. So it's not fire truck specific. Uh, heavy trucks, like I said before, 75, 80,000 miles, not unusual to see one need, need replaced or clean. The operation of the SCR device. Wow. <laughs> Didn't fit. Was it something I said? <laughs> Driving my flies. Right off. Busy day. Uh, but these are the slides I talked about where they, they're trying to get you to keep fluid in the a diesel exhaust fluid tank. So that's enough said. We're all we're all grown men here. We 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 gotta skip this slide, but um, just keep it full the same way you keep your fuel tank. As the fluid level drops in the DE. So, yeah, they're going to tell you about all the bad things that happen if you let the death fluid run out. The DEF reservoir. And we'll point out the death fluid reservoir to you outside. And while I've got you in here and I'm being recorded, um, yeah, even though this is just plain as day, we've got these big placards on here to tell you what goes in the blue cap, and flip it up, and we tell you exactly what to put in the silver colored cap. Guys still mess it up. If you put death fluid in the fuel tank, it's bad. If you start the truck, it's really bad. Starting the truck is, I think it's a $10,000 bill, easily. Is it covered up working? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but if you just put it in there and go, oh crap, and, and call the guys, just cost you the tanker fuel, so it won't be terrible. I think they set us up for failure when they put them right on top of one another. So it's nice. I think they're separated on the truck now, so we'll see what's going on. Yeah, they got the mess. Yeah, we got a 50 50 cap. Yeah, yeah, 50 50 cap. All right. No modification. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Any questions? It's almost nobody left in the room. All right. No. Okay. I got a question. Yes. Let's say someone put death fluid in another, let's say the gas tank by accident. 